Hello, welcome to update video number three on the design of a battle bot that is two sides, pivot point in the middle, and the whole thing swings open and closed. Uh, previous videos showed that uh, I had the design kind of coming along and then I found out that it was completely overweight, the robot was too big and fat, and I had to redesign a lot of parts, scale it down a little bit, and I also redesigned the center pivot point, so I'll go over that now. Here's looking back in time when I first scaled down the left side drive pod. So you can see its size compared to the right size drive pod. I'm now going with 8 inch wheels instead of 10 inch wheels, which uh, Mega Tento, the builder of that, says that it'll work fine with the amp flow gearboxes. So pretty pumped about that. Another thing I'm doing here is I'm messing a lot with the angles that the center housing makes when it attaches to the wheel pod so that I can get it to actually strafe side to side effectively. Also this block here is the width of Mega Tento, so this thing's still huge. I also went back and designed a version of the wheel pods that do not have rotary walkers. This is a slightly lighter weight and a lot more durable alternative to the rotary walkers. Because I'm redoing everything anyway, I've gone back to the drawing board on the center pivot design. This is what I have catted now. You can see there's the left side and the right side. There are two drive motors which have uh, a chain that connects the drive motor to the pivot point. So you can see there's a chain on the top as well as a chain on the bottom. And if one of these motors dies or this uh, you know, sprocket gets destroyed or something, the other motor will still be able to drive the hinge point. So this is what I have catted now. Uh, another option is to move the sprockets and chains inboard which would protect them from damage from overhead hammers and saws and stuff. But if I had the chain in the center of the uh, of this body, I wouldn't be able to do as good internal bracing between these two panels because there'd be the chain in the way. So I'm not sure which of these would be more durable. Inboard is probably preferable, but I'd have to do um, some nice bracing and it might be hard to make this easy to open up and uh, fix things if things go wrong. External chains, I mean, you can see all the damage, you can replace it pretty easily. Um, so those are the two chain options. I've also thought about direct drive, but threw this out pretty quickly because I'm worried that shocks will just damage the gearboxes and I want to have a really large diameter um, center shaft um, for this pivot point and if I use these gearboxes, I'm limited by the shaft diameter of the gearbox. So I basically threw direct drive out. Uh, another option is to make the top and bottom panels actually shaped like a gear, um, like a spur gear, and then have a gear from the gearbox st sticking up on the other side and use that panel as both armor as well as a gear, which would save weight. And this method could be done inboard as well. You wouldn't have to have this uh, kind of exposed gear on the surface. You could put the gears Basically, this it's the same idea as the chains, where you can have it external or internal, but instead of chains, you'd be using uh, gears. Now, I'm worried about this because uh, it'd be hard to fix damage. If one of these, you know, gets damaged, it's a little bit, you know, less likely that it'll work than a chain drive. Also, I'm just less familiar with it, so uh, it worries me a bit. Another option is to do a worm drive, uh, complete complete control uses a worm drive for its lifting fork, so it has been done in combat robots before, but it's hard to back drive a worm uh, setup. So if one of these sides dies, it's unlikely that the other side would be able to continue driving the system. Uh, with chain drives, uh, tangent here, but there is also a middle ground between inboard and outboard. I could do something like this, where the, uh, the sprocket is actually between the two top panels and the lower sprockets between the two bottom panels, but this puts too great of a distance uh, between the two top surfaces and two bottom surfaces, and I prefer them to be at uh, somewhat close levels. So this was all I was looking at here, um, but then I started to work on the gear ratios, and that's when things got a little bit more complicated because this original design used an, uh, an amp flow speed reducer, which is the standard 8 to 1 chain uh, speed reducer that is used in a lot of combat robots. And the ratio, even with a large ratio in this chain drive, just wouldn't be enough to get enough torque to do the clamping motion. So I once started to look for gearboxes that would be a lower ratio and would work, and I found that a lot of them were thicker. Uh, they just were too high. So if you looked at planetary gearboxes, uh, they tended to you know, increase in length basically as you added more stages and as you got a lower ratio. And the same thing with just traditional gearboxes as well. And so it was hard for me to find something that I could just use one chain stage and get the ratio without 
uh, a right angle connector basically. And gearboxes like this are easier to package with lower ratios without the height becoming too big because they just get longer as you add stages. Um, so basically the gear ratio thing ended up making a lot of these ideas more complicated to get done correctly. And then I sketched this, um, but this is just, there's so many failure options with this. And uh, so then I started to seriously look at either finding a company that could build a right angle gearbox like this that I could then mate to a planetary gearbox or doing my own bevel gears in order to uh, mount the motor horizontally. So this is what I did first. Um, this would just be a planetary gearbox. There'd be a shaft to the left and right of the main shaft, which I would brace against the top and bottom panels with pillow blocks or something. And there'd be two bevel gears and then I'd chain drive uh, from the, the side shaft to the main shaft. And uh, after doing this, I realized it was kind of ridiculous that I was even thinking about a chain drive still. So I sketched this, which is just direct bevel gears. You got planetary gearbox, it's positioned horizontally, bevel gears, this bevel gear is attached to the bottom panel here, this bevel gear is attached to the top panel here, the, uh, the neither bevel gear is attached directly to the shaft that's in the center, and if I mounted both of these planetary gearboxes to the bottom surfaces, I could make both of these top panels lift up and then access this to, uh, to fix things if things went wrong. So this is the simplest idea that I came up with when I went back to the brainstorming stage, so therefore it's the one I'm going to go with. The one concern I have is impacts. Um, with the chain drive, I know that I can find sprockets that have like a clutch built into them and they can isolate the gearboxes. I'm not sure if I can find any sort of clutch setup that'll work with just direct driving a, a gear off of my gearbox. So shock might still be a concern, but at least all of this is inboard. There's nothing external that can get caught. It's more compact. I think I can still do the vertical bracing uh, between the top and bottom surfaces. And uh, I'm gonna start working on CAD for this one. And the longer planetary gearboxes interfere with the drive motors. So I'm just going to move stuff around till it fits. Nope. That's worse. Kinda better. Random clip of me figuring out the end point so that it can close far enough that I can still grapple opponents. And here's a massive skip to uh, the point where I figured out how to get the planetary gearboxes so they do not interfere with the drive motors. Um, I got the center uh, all figured out, I have the bracing, and I tossed in four LiPo batteries, uh, the same ones that, uh, that Overhaul uses just to make sure that I could fit some electronics into the extra space in this housing. And there's a lot of exposed uh, area. The gears are not fully covered when, uh, not fully covered from the back when it's closed, and when it's wide open, the uh, whole front area is exposed. So that's concerning. Shout out to Mark from the Ask Aaron forum website uh, that you can ask questions about BattleBots. I uh, asked kind of about unusual gear reduction methods and his point was, if I hit this with a really big hammer, will it still work? Mark's specific comment was that the bevel gears will need to uh, be positioned correctly in X, Y, and Z in order to work, so any shift in any direction will basically break the mechanism. And I agree with him, it almost makes me want to go back to chains, but because I haven't done something this large before, I think I'm kind of erring towards the solution that I feel is simplest, which I feel is the bevel gears. And maybe if I use really large uh, bevel gears with really kind of large teeth, it'll still be able to work with some shifts in the X, Y, or Z direction. For now though, I am going to go back and I'm going to add a whole lot more uh, bracing to that center pivot. And I'm going to keep the chain design saved in case I find a gearbox that can make it work. Here we have the robot with the wheeled pods installed and no rotary walkers. And for those of you watching this video, you're interested in building robots. This is probably a way more appealing design for you because this is obviously more robust. This would do better in combat. Uh, the question for me is, is, is this cool enough to end up getting on TV? And I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But I have this on the back burner, and it's, uh, it's probably a good configuration for surviving Tombstone. Or if I want to add a tail or something else that takes up extra weight. So there we have it, one Saturday evening of CAD right here. You can see the new size as well as the new center pivot design. And uh, there's also a lot of work that went into uh, some motor selection choices. 
the weight of this new size is a lot better, so I'm happy about that. And uh, yeah, the build process isn't very linear, so it's hard to document on video, but it makes sense in my head. So that's what I have right now, and the next updates will probably be redesigning the front wedge pieces.